Hi, today we are going to uh, discuss collective model. In the liquid drop model and the shell model, which we have learned so far, nuclei are assumed to be spherical. However, we have considered that nuclei must be soft and flexible in liquid drop model so that they may deviate from spherical shape. Certainly, some nuclei whose charge distributions are largely deviated from a spherical shape are experimentally found in special regions of mass number. Namely, there exist remarkably deformed nuclei. J. Rainwater point out that the nucleus is able to deform in an ellipsoidal or a spheroidal shape and he investigated the reason of the deformation. The rough sketches of this nuclear spheroidal deformation are the this one. This is a Without deformation, these two cases are deformation. If the nucleus is deformed in a ellipsoidal shape, we have to review the nuclear shell model, which is based on a spherical shape. This means that we have to combine the flexible liquid drop model with an average potential of a rigid shape. A. Bohr, uh, he is the son of Niels Bohr and uh, Mottlerson proposed an uh, advanced model uh, called the unified model or the collective model in which the ordinary shell model and uh, the liquid drop model are uh, uh, unfined. Using this new model, they analysis a lot of experimental data on so-called nuclear collective model. This analysis were very much successful. So, in nuclear spectra, we can identify three kinds of uh, excitations, single nucleon excited state, vibrational excited state, rotational excited state, especially in single nucleon excited state, I mean, to some extent, we predicted from the simple shell model, mostly likely to be the lowest lying excitons of the odd number uh, nuclei nearly close to the So the collective model is uh, used in nuclear physics to explain the properties and uh, behavior of a nuclei that cannot be fully explained by shell model. The shell model is most successful in describing nuclei with the closed shells, where the nucleons fill up completely energy levels, but many nuclei do not have closed shell. In nuclei with the open shell, the nucleons are not filled up completely energy levels and uh, the nucleons are not independently anymore. These nucleons exhibit collective behavior, such as alignment of spins and uh, oscillations of the shape of the nucleus. The collective model is used to describe the phenomena. So these are the some applications of the collective model. So nuclear structures, nuclear stability and decay, heavy ion collisions, astrophysics, nuclear energy, and uh, nuclear medicine. These are the applications and research areas of collective model. So the overall energy of the collective model is the sum of energy levels of the nucleus, rotational energy level of nucleus, vibrational energy level of nucleus.
So these are the uh, <coughs> excuse me. These are the energy levels, especially these are the rotational energy level. Okay. So we know J square equal to so H cross square. j into j plus 1 right so after substituting this one you can get this one this is very very important equation by using this equation we can find the excited state energy level for example this is a uh, uh, unsteady ground state energy level this is some excited state energy levels we can find the energy levels so another one this one is a vibrational energy term so this is the formulas vibration energy term the h cross omega so these are the two important uh, equations correct so, so here i'm not going to explain a detailed uh, collective model so this is all about uh, some key points to find the uh, at least formulas how they are getting the formulas why collective model they are introduced over the shell model okay by using this data i'm going to calculate csr net gate just problem okay so whatever point we are discussing here all the points are very very important to understand collective model i'm not going to discuss theoretical description of the collective model okay next class i'm going to discuss some csr net gate problems